The Northern Ireland national football team represents Northern Ireland in international association football. From 1882 to 1920, all of Ireland was represented by a single side, the Ireland national football team, organised by the Irish Football Association IFA. In 1921, the jurisdiction of the IFA was reduced to Northern Ireland following the secession of clubs in the soon-to-be Irish Free State, although its team remained the national team for all of Ireland until 1950, and used the name Ireland until the 1970s. The Football Association of Ireland FAI organises the separate Republic of Ireland national football team. Although part of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland has always had a representative side that plays in major professional tournaments, whether alongside the rest of Ireland pre-1922 or as its own entity, though not in the Olympic Games, as the International Olympic Committee IOC has always recognised United Kingdom representative sides. Northern Ireland has competed in three FIFA World Cups, reaching the quarter-final stage in the 1958 and 1982 tournaments. At UEFA Euro 2016, the team made its first appearance at the European tournament and reached the second round. History On 18 February 1882, 15 months after the founding of the Irish FA, Ireland made their international debut against England, losing 13–0 in a friendly played at Bloomfield in Belfast. This remains the record defeat for the team, and also England's largest winning margin. On 25 February 1882, Ireland played their second international, against Wales at the racecourse ground, Wrexham, and an equaliser from Johnston became Ireland's first ever goal. In 1884, Ireland competed in the inaugural British Home Championship and lost all three games. Ireland did not win their first game until 19 February 1887, a 4-1 win over Wales in Belfast. Between their debut and this game, they had a run of 14 defeats and one draw, the longest run without a win in the 1800s. Despite the end of this run, heavy defeats continued. On 3 March 1888, they lost 11-0 to Wales and three weeks later, on 24 March, lost 10-2 to Scotland. Further heavy defeats came on 15 March 1890 when they lost 9-1 to England, on 18 February 1899 when they lost 13-2 to England and on 2 February 1901 when they lost 11-0 to Scotland. In 1899, the Irish FA also changed its rules governing the selection of non-resident players. Before then the Ireland team selected its players exclusively from the Irish League, in particular the three Belfast-based clubs Linfield, Cliftonville and Distillery. On 4 March 1899, for the match against Wales, McAdeer included four Irish players based in England. The change in policy produced dividends as Ireland won 1-0. Three weeks later, on 25 March, one of these four players, Archie Goodall, aged 34 years and 279 days, became the oldest player to score in international football during the 19th century when he scored Ireland's goal in a 9-1 defeat to Scotland. In 1920, Ireland was partitioned into Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland. In 1922, Southern Ireland gained independence as the Irish Free State, later to become a republic under the name of Ireland. Amid these political upheavals, a rival football association, the Football Association of Ireland, emerged in Dublin in 1921 and organised a separate league and international team. In 1923, at a time when the home nations had withdrawn from FIFA, the FAI was recognised by FIFA as the governing body of the Irish Free State on the condition that it changed its name to the Football Association of the Irish Free State. The Irish FA continued to organise its national team on an all Ireland basis. Between 1928 and 1946, the IFA were not affiliated to FIFA and the two Ireland teams co-existed, never competing in the same competition. On 8 March 1950, however, in a 0-0 draw with Wales at the racecourse ground in a FIFA World Cup qualifier, the IFA fielded a team that included four players who were born in the Irish Free State. All four players had previously played for the FAI in their qualifiers and as a result had played for two different associations in the same FIFA World Cup tournament. After complaints from the FAI, FIFA intervened and restricted players' eligibility based on the political border. 
In 1953 FIFA ruled neither team could be referred to as Ireland, decreeing that the FAI team be officially designated as the Republic of Ireland, while the IFA team was to become Northern Ireland. <laughs> Past performances British Home Championship Until the 1950s, the major competition for Northern Ireland – Ireland was the British Home Championship. The team had won the competition eight times, taking the title outright on three occasions. They were the last winners of the now defunct competition held in 1984, and hence still are the British champions, and the trophy remains the property of the Irish FA. FIFA World Cup Northern Ireland's best World Cup performance was in their first appearance in the finals, the 1958 World Cup, where they reached the quarter-finals after beating Czechoslovakia 2–1 in the playoff. They were knocked out by France, losing 4–0. In the 1958 competition, Northern Ireland became the least populous country to have qualified for the World Cup, a record that stood until Trinidad and Tobago qualified for the 2006 World Cup. Northern Ireland remains, however, the least populous country to have qualified for more than one World Cup finals tournament, to win a World Cup finals match, and to have progressed from the first round of the World Cup finals. Captain of the national side at the 1958 World Cup was Danny Blanchflower, who also captained Tottenham Hotspur in the English League and was twice Footballer of the Year in England. His younger brother Jackie was also a key member of the national team, and won two league titles in England with Manchester United, until his career was ended by injuries suffered in the Munich Air disaster of February 1958. Despite the presence of world-class forward George Best, another Manchester United player, for the 1960s and 1970s, Northern Ireland failed to qualify for any major tournaments. Northern Ireland also qualified for the 1982 World Cup. Their opening game was against Yugoslavia at La Romareda Stadium in Zaragoza. It was the international debut of 17-year-old Norman Whiteside, who became the youngest player ever in the World Cup finals, a record that still stands. The game finished goalless. Five days later, they drew 1-1 with Honduras, which was a disappointment, and many believed had doomed Northern Ireland's chances of advancing in the competition. They needed a win against hosts Spain in the third and final group game at the Mestalla Stadium in Valencia. They faced a partisan atmosphere with a mostly Spanish crowd and a Spanish-speaking referee in Hector Ortiz who was unwilling to punish dirty play from the Spanish players. A mistake from Spain goalkeeper Luis Arcanada, however, gifted Jerry Armstrong the only goal of the game, and despite having Mal Donaghy sent off on 60 minutes, Northern Ireland went on to record an historic 1–0 win and top the first stage group. A 2–2 draw with Austria at the Vicente Calderon Stadium meant that a win against France would take them into the semi-finals, however a French team inspired by Michel Platini won 4–1 and eliminated Northern Ireland from the competition. In the 1986 World Cup, they reached the first round. Billy Bingham, a member of the 1958 squad, was manager for both of these tournaments. They have not qualified for any other World Cups since. <laughs> Recent history Lori Sanchez was appointed in January 2004 after a run of 10 games without a goal under the previous manager Sammy McElroy, which was a European record for any international team until San Marino went over 20 games without scoring between October 2008 and August 2012. That run ended after his first game in charge, a 1–4 loss to Norway in a friendly in February 2004. The run of 16 games without a win ended after his second game, a 1–0 victory in a friendly over Estonia, with a largely experimental side, in March 2004. On 7 September 2005, Northern Ireland beat England 1–0 in a 2006 World Cup qualifier at Windsor Park. David Healy scored the winner in the 73rd minute. Almost a year later, on 6 September 2006, Northern Ireland defeated Spain 3–2 in a qualifier for UEFA Euro 2008, with Healy scoring a hat-trick. In June 2007, Nigel Worthington was named manager in the place of Laurie Sanchez, who took over at Fulham. 
Initially, Worthington took over until the end of the Euro 2008 qualifiers, but was later given a contract until the end of the Euro 2012 qualifiers. Michael O'Neill became manager in February 2012 after Worthington had resigned in October 2011 after a poor Euro 2012 qualification campaign. The Northern Ireland team qualified for its first ever UEFA European Championship, Euro 2016 in France, after beating Greece 3-1 at Windsor Park on 8 October 2015. At the tournament, Northern Ireland were beaten 1-0 by Poland on 20 June 2016 followed by a 2-0 win against Ukraine on 16 June 2016 and finally a 1-0 loss against Germany in the group stage. That was enough to qualify for a round of 16 spot where they lost 1-0 to Wales due to an unfortunate own goal by Gareth McCauley. Stadium Northern Ireland play their home matches at Windsor Park, Belfast, home of Linfield, which they have use of on a 108-year lease, giving the owners 15% of revenue, including gate receipts and TV rights. There was a proposal to build a multi-sports stadium for Northern Ireland at the disused Mays Prison outside Lisburn for the use of rugby, Gaelic games and football. This plan was given an in principle go ahead by the Irish Football Association. However, it was opposed by fans, over 85% of whom in a match day poll conducted by the amalgamation of Northern Ireland supporters clubs, AONISC, preferred to stay at a smaller new or redeveloped ground in the city of Belfast. The AONISC organised a protest against the move to the maze at the game against Estonia in March 2006. The issue assumed ever greater urgency by 2007, following a series of inspections which questioned the suitability of Windsor Park to host international football. Following a reduction of capacity due to the closure of the railway stand, the IFA made it known that they wished to terminate their contract for the use of the stadium. A report on health and safety in October 2007 indicated that the South Stand might have to be closed for internationals, which would further reduce the stadium's capacity to 9,000. In April 2008, Belfast City Council announced that they had commissioned drivers Jonas to conduct a feasibility study into the building of a sports stadium in Belfast which could accommodate international football, which was followed at the beginning of May 2008 by speculation that the Mays Stadium project was going to be radically revised by Peter Robinson, the finance and personnel minister in the Northern Ireland Assembly, so that any construction might be used for purposes other than football, rugby union and Gaelic games. Given the time that is needed to build a new stadium, in the absence of significant work improving Windsor Park, Northern Ireland may be forced to play their home games at a venue outside Northern Ireland for a period. In March 2009, proposals were announced for the construction of a new 25,000-seat stadium in the Sydenham area of East Belfast as an alternative to the Mays proposal. This would form part of a major development, with links to both George Best Belfast City Airport and the Bangor Railway Line. The development would also include a hotel, and retail, leisure areas. The stadium itself would be used for both football and rugby union, with Glentoran and Ulster Rugby intended as tenants. Ulster GAA, however, who were a partner in the Mays proposal, stated that in the event of a new stadium being built in East Belfast, which is a major unionist area, their preference would then be to remain at Casement Park in nationalist West Belfast. The IFA were initially non-committal about any of the proposals for improving their facilities, be it rebuilding Windsor Park, or supporting either the Mays or Sydenham proposals. In September 2009, however, they issued an announcement in favour of the redevelopment of Windsor Park. Although there were no specifics to this, Linfield had previously released a study with two proposals, of which the major one would be a £20 million rebuilding of the stadium, raising the spectator capacity to 20,000. In 2011, the Northern Ireland executive allocated £138 million for a major programme of stadium redevelopment throughout Northern Ireland, with £28 million allocated to the redevelopment of Windsor Park. In June 2012, further details of the stadium's redevelopment were released. The plan was to redevelop Windsor Park into an 18,000 all-seater stadium with a series of phased works originally intended to begin in the summer of 2013. 
The redevelopment would include the demolition of the existing east and south stand structures, to be replaced by new purpose-built stands that would partially enclose the stadium, complete renovation of the existing north and west stands, and construction of both new conferencing facilities and a new headquarters facility for the IFA. In February 2013, planning permission for the redevelopment was granted. The cost of the project was estimated to be around £29.2 million, of which £25.2 million would come from government funding. It was initially planned for the work to begin in September 2013. Two months later however, Irish Premiership Club Crusaders began legal proceedings to have the process judicially reviewed. As owners of the site, rivals Linfield were in line to receive not only a redeveloped stadium, but also £200,000 per annum from the IFA in land rent instead of the existing agreement which entitled Linfield to 15% of match revenue. Crusaders believed this to be against European Union competition law as well as a form of state aid towards Linfield. In a hearing that took place on of May 2013, Crusaders' request was granted. It was ruled that it was a possibility for the redevelopment to be classed as state aid towards Linfield. The aspect of the challenge concerning competition law, however, was dismissed. In July 2013, Crusaders agreed to a possible settlement brought forward by the judicial review. The details of the settlement were not made public, but Crusaders said that it had the potential to benefit the entirety of the football family. In September 2013, Sports Minister Carol Nechulin said that she was still committed to making sure the redevelopment went ahead as scheduled, after previously stating that she would not sign off on the funding until the IFA resolved governance issues surrounding David Martin's return to the role of deputy president. In December 2013, three months after the work was originally scheduled to begin, the redevelopment was finally given the green light. The sports minister signed off on £31 million to complete the project. The redevelopment finally got underway on 6 May 2014 after the 2013-14 domestic season had finished, eight months later than originally planned. The work is due to be completed in 2015. Topic. Historic controversy over sectarianism An element of Northern Ireland's support has been regarded as sectarian. Neil Lennon, a Roman Catholic Celtic player who had been subject to sectarian abuse from Northern Ireland fans while playing for Northern Ireland in Windsor Park, was issued with a death threat by loyalists and retired from international football in 2002 as a result. Steps taken to eradicate the sectarian element within the support have been successful. Lennon has been quick to praise these initiatives. The IFA have made huge strides. Quote, he also praised the Football for All Outstanding Achievement Award winner Stuart McAfee for the work he has done to create a more inclusive atmosphere at international games. In 2006, Northern Ireland's supporters were awarded the Brussels International Supporters Award for their charity work, general good humour and behaviour and efforts to stamp out sectarianism. Representatives of the amalgamation of official Northern Ireland supporters clubs received the award from UEFA and EU representatives prior to the Northern Ireland-Spain game at Windsor Park in September 2006. Steps by the IFA to promote football for all continue. At a friendly match in Dublin in 2011 against Scotland, the IFA carried out an inquiry following an incident in which Northern Ireland fans sang sectarian songs. One fan who was identified in the inquiry was said to be in line for a lifetime ban from receiving tickets to any future Northern Ireland home or away games. Sections of stands in Windsor Park were known for their chanting during games of anti-Catholic, Irish songs. Northern Ireland Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure, Carol Nee Chulin, the first senior Sinn Féin representative to attend an international at Windsor Park, commended the very real efforts that have been made by the IFA to tackle sectarianism at their matches." After a match in August 2011. <inaudible> <inaudible> Popular culture The Green and White Army is the name given to the fans that follow the Northern Ireland national football team. Since the defeat of England in 2005, there has been an increased demand for tickets exceeding supply. Tongue-in-cheek songs such as, We're Not Brazil, We're Northern Ireland, sung to the tune of Battle Hymn of the Republic, an American Civil War song, It's Just Like Watching Brazil, and 
Stand Up for the Ulstermen are popular at home matches. One of the first footballing celebrities was former Manchester United and Northern Ireland footballer George Best. The 1968 European Footballer of the Year, Best won 37 caps and scored nine goals for his country. Competitive record FIFA World Cup Champions runners up third place fourth place UEFA European Championship UEFA Nations League Topic: British Home Championship. British Home Championship. Winners: 3, 1914 as Ireland, 1980, 1984. Shared: 5, 1903, 1956, 1958, 1959, 1964. Topic: Summary of results. All competitive matches all matches including friendlies results updated as of the 12th of November 2017 after the match against Switzerland. Topic: <laughs> All-time head-to-head record. As of the 18th of November 2018. Positive record. Neutral record. Negative record. Topic: Results and fixtures. Topic: 2018. Topic: UEFA Euro 2016 qualifying. On 23 February 2014, Northern Ireland were drawn to face the Faroe Islands, Finland, Greece, Hungary and Romania in UEFA Euro 2016 qualifying Group F. The matches were scheduled to be played between September 2014 and October 2015. 2018 FIFA World Cup qualifying On 25 July 2015, Northern Ireland were drawn to face Azerbaijan, Czech Republic, Germany, Norway and San Marino in 2018 FIFA World Cup qualification, UEFA Group C. The matches are scheduled to be played between September 2016 and October 2017. <laughs> Players Topic. Current squad The following players were selected for the friendly against Republic of Ireland and the Nations League game against Austria in November 2018, caps and goals updated as of 18 November 2018, after the match against Austria. Topic. Recent call-ups The following players have been called up to the Northern Ireland squad during the last 12 months. INJ withdrew from the squad due to an injury. Pre-preliminary squad. Rhett retired from the national team. Topic. Previous squads FIFA World Cup squads 1958 FIFA World Cup squad 1982 FIFA World Cup squad 1986 FIFA World Cup squad Topic Greatest ever team The following players were voted by fans as worthy of being included in the Irish Football Association's greatest ever team in a 4-4-2 formation Topic 
managerial team Mann, Billy Bingham, manager 1967 to 71, 1980 to 93. Ass, Michael O'Neill, manager 2012 date. Topic: First 11. GK, Pat Jennings, 1964 to 86. RB, Jimmy Nickel, 1976 to 86. CB Aaron Hughes 1998 CB Gareth McCauley 2005 LB Mal Donaghy 1980 to 94 Erm Keith Gillespie 1994 to 2008 CM Danny Blanchflower 1949 to 63 CM Stephen Davis 2005 LM George Best 1964 to 77 CF David Healy 2000 to 13 CF Jerry Armstrong 1977 to 86 Topic Substitutes Sub GK Harry Gregg 1954 to 64 Sub RB Pat Rice 1968 to 79 Sub CB Alan McDonald 1985 to 96 Sub LB Sammy Nelson 1970 to 82 Sub Erm Billy Bingham 1951 to 63 Sub CM Norman Whiteside 1982 to 89 Sub LM Michael Hughes 1991 to 2004 Sub CF Peter Doherty 1935 to 50 Topic Player Records Topic Northern Ireland Players with fifty nine or more caps Caps updated as of the fifteenth of October twenty eighteen after the match against Bosnia and Herzegovina. Topic Top Ireland, Northern Ireland goalscorers Goals updated as of 15 October 2018 after the match against Poland. Managers As of 18 November 2018 after the match against Austria. Current coaching staff Topic Kit suppliers Topic Media coverage Sky Sports currently have the rights to show Northern Ireland's all competitive international fixtures Highlights of qualifiers are shown on ITV with rights to World Cup finals and European Championships held jointly by BBC and ITV. Both channels broadcast Northern Ireland's games at Euro 2016. Dating from the 1960s, for many years Northern Ireland's games were shown live on BBC Northern Ireland, with highlights on network BBC via Sportsnight until the rights to home games were sold to Sky in 2007. In May 2013, Sky acquired the rights to all Northern Ireland qualifying games for UEFA Euro 2016 and the 2018 FIFA World Cup. From 2008 to 2013, BBC Northern Ireland held the rights to highlights of all of Northern Ireland's home international qualifiers. But in May 2013, ITV secured a deal to show highlights of the European qualifiers for Euro 2016 and the 2018 World Cup, including Northern Ireland games, between 2014 and 2017. In 2015, BBC Northern Ireland acquired the live rights to show Northern Ireland's friendlies in the run-up to UEFA Euro 2016, but the next two subsequent home friendlies against Croatia and New Zealand were on Premier Sports, Earsport until the contract ends before the 2018 World Cup. See also Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>